Lost Ark Review Tales of Arcasia Lost Ark is an MMORPG. To be more specific, it's an isometric MMO with ARPG elements. Think of Diablo or Path of Exile. Add in a bit of League of Legends, with the addition of trade skills, base building, sort of. Your island is a Clash of Clans style minigame, group raids, chaos dungeons, PvP arenas, world events, sailing, a mix of classes and abilities with only a small nod at typical MMO roles, support, tank, etc., and much more. Lost Ark is like a table full of food at a family event. There is something for absolutely everyone, even for the people who only eat chips and put ketchup on their roast dinner. How dare they? My journey with Lost Ark has been a long one. I first saw the game appear back in 2018 with a 4-minute CG trailer that looks nothing like Smilegate's MMORPG today. The game was then released in Korea at the end of 2019, and like other eager players, I followed the news about the game's release in the West. Three years later, the game is finally getting Western European, North American, and South American servers. At last, I am free from the terrible ping on the Russian server and squinting at the Cyrillic alphabet trying to figure out which ability is which. If I'm being honest, I didn't dive into Lost Ark with very high expectations. I knew I'd enjoy the game, I'm a big fan of ARPGs when done correctly, but I wasn't expecting much more than that. It took about 30 minutes before I realized this is not your average free-to-play cash in ARPG, I'm looking at you magic. Legends. Lost Ark begins with a brief prologue that wastes little time impressing and dazzling with gorgeously rendered cutscenes, fantastic graphics, and beautiful environments. The game looks mesmerizing, something infinitely more impressive when it's in the free-to-play space. Every single picture in this article was taken in-game of either gameplay or cutscenes, it looks that good. Feelings and emotions I usually only experience in big AAA releases or indie darlings with creative art styles are felt in abundance. Pausing to admire a sprawling view, backtracking to check out the horizon after a tense battle, feeling somber after a particularly hard-hitting bit of story, Lost Ark has it all. I also feel overwhelmed at times with action RPGs, there are so many things being dropped constantly, and trying to pick it up or sift through it all while still continuing to fight and move can become chaotic. Some of the popular games in the genre require extra reading to make sure you're playing the game correctly. With ever-changing metas, even how to level the same class can change drastically from patch to patch. I have only played one version of Lost Ark, but I never felt like I was making the incorrect decision on how to level my characters. Out of all the choices I could make while leveling, most of them feel like I could play the way I wanted to, no right or wrong tree to level up. Lost Ark plays in a way that will feel familiar to those that play a lot of action RPGs. Go from town to town, tracking down pieces of the Ark to stop the ultimate evil. On top of the familiar gameplay is added MMO style questing as well. Combining the two is a nice touch, letting me choose to do something other than follow the main story if I choose. You are rewarded more experience if you choose to play through the main storyline, and the story was interesting enough that it kept my attention. The game starts you out at level 10. I did a little digging around and that was not always the case. Each class had its own original mini opening story that has since been scrapped for an opening that everyone shares. Since you now start out at level 10, your character already has a bar full of moves. My first time playing I briefly felt a little overwhelmed, but just by reading the description of all the moves before setting out, I eliminated any issues. While I would have liked to see what the first 10 levels were just to see, a game that learns from its mistakes and adjusts to make the overall experience better is always welcome. The level cap right now is 50, which took me about 20 hours to reach on my first character, and only a few seconds on my next character. Once you hit level 50 the first time you get a free boost for another character, which I love the idea of. The last thing I want to do is start the process all over to have another max level character. What Lost Ark does well, though, is present each new continent is a self-contained story arc. Your overall quest is to find the seven pieces of the titular Lost Ark, an ancient power source used to banish darkness from the world. Initially this sees you joining up with a priest named Father Armin and tangling with a demonic creature called Karmi. Like you, they are Delanes, descended from an ancient race of beings with repressed demonic power. 
If it sounds confusing, that's because it kind of is, but this is just the overarching plot. And 60 hours in, I had still only found three of the eponymous arcs. I'm sure I read that the seventh hasn't even been added to the game yet. The first act, if you will, sees you teaming up with Prince Thorain, a noble hero trying to wrest control of his kingdom back from a usurper. As a standalone story, it's actually very good. The characters are likable, the writing cheesy in that JRPG way but also littered with flecks of genuine pathos. But then each new nation you visit once you've unlocked your own ship has its own self-contained issues to deal with. Arthatine, for example, is a continent that resembles Midgar from Final Fantasy. It's all steampunk art, robots, machinery and sci-fi leanings that feel at odds with what has come before but in a really good way. It feels like a nice change of pace. An earlier continent sees you taking a shrinking potion and fighting monstrous insects in a giant forest. It's creative and diverse, and keeps things interesting even when you're doing busywork. Also, make sure to keep in mind that there are certain rewards and quests that can only be done by one character in your Lost Ark roster, your collection of characters. Usually this would be your, main. Throughout the game, you will come upon training quests, rewards in your inventory, and more that can only be completed or received once, so be sure you do this on the character you want to keep. Each level gains you skill points that you can spend between your talents. Each tier will cost a different number of points, costing more as you gain levels. At three different intervals for each skill, level 4, 20 and 48, you can choose an additional ability. These usually change the type of attack or add bonuses to crit etc. What I love though, is that they aren't permanent choices. You can just change your choice at any time, unlike in World of Warcraft, where you need to purchase tomes, or like in Elder Scrolls Online, where you need to pay to reset your skills. The flexibility is great. The game moves with your left mouse button, so it took some getting used to, as I'm more of a WASD girl myself. In this case, those are your attack buttons, and thankfully, you can't attack NPCs, because most of the townspeople would be really mad at me. Because of the way you control your character, I had some difficulty during battle. Initially, Lost Ark is a very guided experience. The world is divided into various continents, themselves split into different zones. These zones are designed to be experienced in a specific order, leading you by the nose through a series of main and optional quests. Lost Ark's approach to questing is like a parody of MMO design. You'll be sent off to kill monsters that respawn so rapidly that it's often quicker to wait for them to reappear rather than explore. The NPCs that populate zones are some of the laziest I've encountered, too, asking you to talk to people they're literally stood next to on their behalf, or move objects like crates or barrels all of 10 yards. The weirdest objectives are those that have you perform an emote to an NPC. I'm not sure how I'd stop an aspiring king from doubting his own legitimacy, but I'm not sure enthusiastically pumping my fist at him would cut it. It's rudimentary to say the least. But Lost Ark gets away with this approach for two reasons. First, the quests push you through zones with remarkable efficiency. Not only are objectives clear and straightforward, you often complete them with a different NPC from the one who assigned the quest. This helps maintain momentum and minimize backtracking, while also providing a constant stream of rewards like coin and new weapons and armor. Once players hit level 50, an entirely new game opens up. Instead of going from place to place picking up snippets of story, players will mostly be engaging in grinding instanced combat to level up their gear. This includes Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids, Boss Rush, Abyssal Dungeons, and The Tower. Chaos Dungeons and the Tower are solo experiences and typically the starting place for newer level 50 characters. The former is essentially a horde mode where multiple waves of weaker enemies are thrown at the player across a few different stages. The Tower is a ladder climbing mode with challenges, waves of monsters and occasional boss fights with varying requirements. Boss Rush and Guardian Raid can be played alone, but are typically more enjoyable with a party. Boss Rush is exactly like it sounds, players face off against bosses one after another. Each of these game modes can get extremely tedious if you don't enjoy doing the exact same content over and over. Even with the different levels and tiers, they all start to blend together in the end. Guardian Raid is one of the more interesting game modes and is similar to the Monster Hunter genre. A group of players will need to track down a giant enemy across a large battlefield. 
each player has a limited number of consumables and can only be knocked down a certain number of times, which adds to the tension and competitive nature of the mode. Once a player locates the beast, they can signal to their allies via a flare that reveals the monster. These bosses are often incredibly strong and require learning their individual rotations in order to take them down. This leads to one of the most engaging and dynamic endgame experiences in Lost Ark and is by far the most fun in terms of repeatable content, especially if you enjoy the aforementioned monster hunter genre. It's all for an eventually worthy cause given the endgame content is full of dungeons, raids, and some more interesting storylines, but you really have to put the work into it. Working at a game, I know. It'll suit some players' mindsets but look at all that MMO competition. Lost Ark's greatest strength here is that it's priced lower than the competition and you won't incur any subscription fees. That doesn't take away the sense of constantly grinding but at least you're not paying so much for the privilege. At least not unless you're tempted by the many microtransactions you can choose to purchase along the way. Lost Ark definitely has its moments. It's satisfying playing characters in a different way. I liked whacking things with an axe before switching over to shooting everything in sight as a gunner. I like not having to